If you have read anything from a Bible to a Christian coloring book, you have probably heard about when Adam and Eve ate the fatal, forbidden fruit, in the Garden of Eden, which led to the fall of humanity. While scripture gives enough information to understand the basics of this story, there are certain details not given by the biblical authors that have left us with difficult, even controversial, questions, such as why God put a forbidden tree in his utopian garden in the first place, whether sin and evil existed before the fall or not, how long our first parents were in the garden before succumbing to temptation, and why God created people with the propensity to sin. What we do know, according to Genesis 2-3, is that the trees in the Garden of Eden were planted by God himself. Eden, which means, pleasant, was a place that was, well watered, by an irrigation system developed by God that resulted in rivers flowing from it. While God was the original gardener, he commissioned Adam to cultivate the garden as an image bearer of God. Eden was a safe place for Adam and Eve to live out their designed purpose. In the middle of the garden were two trees that scripture names the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil, Genesis chapter 2 verse 9. These trees had a supernatural property to them. The tree of life produced fruit that yielded everlasting life to whoever ate from it. The fruit was so potent that after the fall, God barred Adam and Eve from accessing it lest they end up living forever underneath the weight of their sin and shame which was a very merciful act of God. The tree of knowledge was similar to the rest of the trees in that its fruit was pleasant to the sight and good for food. While many people picture it as an apple, probably because of the namesake lump in men's throats, we do not know what kind of fruit this tree bore. Whatever it was, though, eating from this tree was clearly forbidden. That does not mean that the tree was poisonous, or its fruit was toxic, however, because everything God created was, good. It is even possible, as Rory Shiner postulates, that God would have eventually allowed them to eat this fruit when they were mature and ready to receive the wisdom it provided. Nevertheless, it was forbidden at that time. Why did God prohibit Adam and Eve from eating from the tree of knowledge? Because he knew that it would destroy their innocence and purity, introduce shame and guilt, and bring death into their lives. God told Adam that if he ate from it, he would, surely die. Because of this, Adam knew that obeying God was good and disobeying him was bad, but he had no real, experiential understanding about death, because he had never seen it. All he knew so far was life and goodness. Then enters the sly serpent that was possessed by, or at least motivated by Satan himself. John calls him the, great dragon. That ancient serpent, the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. But the serpent did not force Eve to take the fruit. He simply twisted the truth, beautified sin, and left out the horror, pain, shame, and death that would come with their disobedience. After a familiar progression of events, the serpent's temptation led Eve to eat the fruit and give a bite to Adam who was passively watching alongside her. As a result of this first meal in the Bible, they were aware of their nakedness, filled with shame, cursed with difficulties, and kicked out of the garden. Their disobedience caused a ripple effect of sin and death that stretched beyond themselves to all of humanity across all of time. There are many lessons to learn from different aspects of this story, but the best understanding of the forbidden fruit is in one word, choice. According to his omniscience and sovereignty, God caused the tree of knowledge to grow in paradise and he made a covenant with Adam and Eve to refrain from eating from it so they would have a choice between receiving the eternal blessings that come through obedience and worship to a gracious God or the consequences from disobedience and idolatry against a just God. The tree represented the choice between submitting to God's law or pursuing moral autonomy. That is why the serpent said, you shall be as gods. Ironically, God had already made Adam and Eve as close to gods, as any humans have ever been. He created them, in his image, positioned them together in complete harmony, breathed into them his own breath, empowered them with dominion over all of creation, gave them the responsibility to care for the plants and animals, blessed them with the ability of procreation, and provided them with everything they would need to survive and thrive, such as the perfect food, fruit, which requires no harvesting, milling, mixing, 
kneading, processing, or cooking in order to eat it. You just pluck and eat. When you do, it does not even harm the tree. More than that, God gave Adam and Eve the opportunity of eternal life in paradise. Instead of embracing their destiny to rule creation in joy, freedom, and life, they sadly chose their own path to pain, enslavement, and death. God gave them an invitation to fully satisfy their desires, yet they ignored it and chose dissatisfaction and a diminishing life instead. And as representatives for mankind, their consequences affected, and are still affecting, all of humanity. One author described this as a catastrophic bite that doomed them and their children.